Hello everyone, welcome to the KGN News. Today we're bringing news about our airport, the latest election news, news from the Water District, news from Kern County Sheriff, a charity event coming, coffee with a cop coming, today's gas prices, weather sports, and much more. From the Rademacher Hills to Bee Mountain and the mighty Sierras, Ridgecrest to Inyo Kern and China Lake, this is your news for the Indian Wells Valley with the KZGN News Crew. Hello, I'm Tom Whitney. Thanks for joining us for the news affecting Ridgecrest and the Indian Wells Valley. In news about our airport, there is a call for help. Last week, the U.S. Department of Transportation released the request for proposals for airports seeking 2016 Small Community Air Service Development Grant Program. Grant applications are currently due to the DOT on May 3rd. The Indian Wells Valley Airport District is currently working to develop a 2016 grant proposal aimed at returning air service to the Inukern Airport. There are a number of items that go into the development of the application. The Inukern Airport believes that with grant funding, an airline can be recruited and local air service could be reestablished before the end of 2016. The airport's plan of action for the use of grant funds has been established and a letter of interest from a viable airline has been obtained. In order to make the application complete, the airport needs to show the local community is committed to matching at least 10% of the total funds requested and that travelers will support the potential new service. We have not had air service here since 2013. Scott Seymour, airport manager, is asking for support from the community. He is asking for the community to continue to support the effort by writing and submitting letters of support for the 2016 grant application. If you or your business is interested in supporting this grant application, you can pledge your support two ways. You can offer financial support through corporate matching funds, or a letter of support stating that you and or your company will use air service if instated. Sample support letters can be found at their website at www.inukernairport.com. If anyone wants more information, you can also call Scott at the airport. Scott's phone number is 760-377-5844. Everyone should get behind this application. All you have to do is write a letter of support. It's easy. Viable communities need to have air service in today's economy. So go to the website. There are two sample letters there. Get a sample letter. Use it or change it to add your support. If you can offer financial support, call Scott. If you do write a letter of support, you can email them to Nicole at inukernairport.com or if you want to mail in the letter you can send it to Inukern Airport Post Office Box 634 Inukern, California 93527 In news from the Kern County Sheriff's Department we get this update Earlier in the week we reported that a prisoner was found dead in a Kern County Sheriff's Prisoner Transport Bus They have released the details of that death The deceased's name was Kurt William Tidwell He was a 62 year old man from Lake Isabel, California he was found dead on Monday, April 4th. His time of death was 5.14 p.m. Here's what happened. A group of prisoners were being transported from Ridgecrest to the Central Receiving Facility in Bakersfield. The bus made a stop in Mojave. As the prisoners were being checked, the decedent was found unresponsive in the transportation bus upon arriving at the Kern County Sheriff's Office Mojave Jail. He was pronounced dead at the scene after a post-mortem examination, the cause of death was a non-traumatic pulverated ulcer, and the manner of death was natural. Next of kin has been notified. One election news, things were changing quick yesterday. After Trump gave a huge rally speech in New York, he has now stopped campaigning for a couple of days to regroup his campaign. It is reported that he is now hiring more expert advisors and get re ready for the rest of the campaign. He has hired some real powerhouse Republican promoters and advisors. It appears he is getting ready to really step up the campaign. He believes this is the time to do it, as it is about a week and a half to the next primary. And then the primary after that is a huge one with hundreds of delegates at stake. So it looks like he is to finally going to get the local ground campaigns going. This has been a Cruz's strong point to date. He has had great ground campaigns which probably led to the couple states where Trump was leading, but then was overtaken by Cruz. And it looks like Trump is now ready to spend the money to do it as well. Cruz was really hounded at a couple events in New York yesterday. 
On the Democrat side, it seems that Clinton and Sanders are now going after each other after Clinton, in an interview, wouldn't answer the question if she thought Sanders was qualified to be president. In reaction to that, Sanders fired back with instances where Clinton has demonstrated that she isn't qualified to be president. After the media got all over this non-committal comments between them, Clinton tried to defuse it, but is not going away. Sanders believes he has the momentum to pull off an upset in New York. Trump and Clinton are showing enthusiasm towards the next election in New York. It's home turf for both of them. But the polls are showing that Sanders is closing in on Clinton there. Many pundits are saying that the next couple weeks are probably best for Trump and Clinton over their opponents. The next election is Saturday in Wyoming for the Democrats. And in two weeks, Tuesday, April 19th, it will be the New York primary for both parties. In New York, the Republicans will go after 95 delegates, while the Democrats will go after 291 delegates. And then the next big Super Tuesday is a week after that on April 26th. And this is the primary day that seems to have fired Trump into beefing up his operations to really go after these elections. Elections will be held in Connecticut, Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and Rhode Island. In that election, the Republicans will be fighting over 134 delegates. The Democrats will fight over 462 delegates. In debate news, the Clinton and Sanders campaigns have agreed to a debate date. The next Democrat debate will be next Thursday, April 14th. It will be hosted by CNN. It will be shown on CNN at 6 p.m. our time. Oh, and did you catch the back and forth at a speech Bill Clinton was giving in Pennsylvania for his wife? He started getting heckled by some Black Lives Matter protesters. He finally let loose on them when they wouldn't shut up. Well, I'm not a fan of the Clintons. I thought his response was great. I'll have to paraphrase because I only caught it once and the exchange was real quick. Basically, he challenged them by saying that if black lives matter so much to them, then why weren't the people in Chicago stopping the black gang leaders from recruiting their 13-year-old kids to go out and sell drugs and kill other black gang members? He asked, why don't you care about helping those black lives? Don't those black lives matter? That was Bill Clinton's comment paraphrased. Now, what do you think the media reaction was? Generally, it reacted to it in an inspired support of Clinton's comment, some pundits already commenting in surprise, like they are waiting for someone from Black Lives Matter movement to attack him. But so far, no problem. No outrage from black leaders. Now let me ask you this. What if Trump or Cruz said that? This has been an issue discussed on conservative talk and news programs since the Black Lives movement started. Many pundits challenging them to why they are attacking the political candidates on the issue while they are doing nothing in their homes and cities to change the way of life that supports criminal activity. Oftentimes leading up to a confrontation between a police officer and a criminal, often with a gun. And if any pundits or politicians should mention that all lives matter, the outrage is overwhelming. So where is the outrage towards Bill Clinton? Or will this be part of the double standard between supporting liberal versus conservatives? If a liberal makes a harsh statement, they get a pass by the liberals and liberal-leaning media. I guarantee if Trump or Cruz had said what Clinton said, that would be getting slammed now with the left-leaning press throwing the racist charges all over the place. And as an interesting side note, wouldn't it now be appropriate for the media to ask Hillary if she agrees with her husband's comments? Does she agree that black leaders and parents should be doing more in their own homes and cities to stop the black-on-black -black violence? Or does she try and distance herself from her husband's comments? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Now stay with us. After the break, we'll have some news from the Water District. Thanks for staying with us. In news from the Indian Wells Valley Water District, they have this announcement. Attention water users, with the start of April, the summer water restrictions go into effect. The Indian Wells Valley Water District wants to remind everyone on the summer water restrictions. Outside watering can only be done on certain days. Even home addresses can water on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Odd number addresses can only water on Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. You can only water during the hours of 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. 
No watering on Mondays. Make sure to not allow any runoff into the street. All water must stay on your property. And remember, there is also no watering outside within 48 hours of any rainfall. The Water District wants to remind everyone, don't waste water, use water responsibly. Violators of the ordinance will be cited and fined. In event news, here's a special fundraiser basketball game you still have time to get to if you want. Friday evening, there is a charity event between the Ridgecrest Police Department and James Monroe Junior High School. This will be a basketball game between the police officers and some students. It will be held at the Burroughs High School gym. Members of the Ridgecrest Police Department through the Police Employees Association of Ridgecrest will be participating in a charity fundraising event for the James Monroe Junior High School basketball program. This is in an effort to raise money for new uniforms. The James Monroe varsity 8th grade team has challenged RPD to an official game of basketball. The Police Employees Association of Ridgecrest has accepted the challenge. Tip-off is scheduled for 7 p.m. tonight. Location for this event will be the Burroughs High School Gym. Tickets will be $5 at the door. Beverages and snacks will be sold at the game. Please come out and support this event and the fundraising efforts of our local youth. This game will not disappoint. Again, the game will be tonight, Friday, April 8th at Burroughs High School Gym at 7 p.m. Now some events coming next week. On April 15, 2016, officers from the California Highway Patrol and community members will come together in an informal, neutral space to discuss community issues, have coffee, and build relationships. Throughout the month of April, the California Highway Patrol Mojave Office will be hosting Coffee with a Cop meetings at various locations in eastern Kern County. Coffee with a Cop provides a unique opportunity for community members to ask questions and learn more about the department's work in East Kern County neighborhoods. All community members are invited to attend. The event will be Friday, April 15th and begins at 9 a.m. at Starbucks located at 750 China Lake Boulevard, right here in Ridgecrest. Please contact Officer Darlena Dotson with questions at 661-823-5500. The majority of contacts law enforcement has with the public happen during emergencies or emotional situations. Those situations are not always the most effective time for relationship building with the community. And some community members may feel officers are unapproachable on the street. Coffee with a Cop breaks down barriers and allows for relaxed, one-on-one -on -one interaction. We hope community members will welcome the opportunity to ask questions, bring concerns forward, or simply get to know our officers, said Lieutenant Williams. These interactions are the foundation of community partnerships. The program aims to advance the practice of community policing through improved relations between police officers and community members. One cup of coffee at a time, we can make a difference. In news from the Kern County Libraries, we get this announcement. The Kern County Library is hosting a Volunteen Project. It'll happen Friday, April 15th and Saturday, April 16th. It'll be at all Kern County Library branches, including the Ridgecrest branch. Are you a team looking for to fulfill service hours? Are you ready to make a difference in your community? This two-day event will allow teens to earn service hours. This is in celebration of National Library Week. The Kern County Library is celebrating the dynamic changes that are happening in today's libraries. Service to the community has always been the focus of our library and we look forward to hosting our first ever countywide teen volunteer effort, says Nancy Kerr, Director of Libraries. National Volunteer Week, which coincides with National Library Week, is the perfect opportunity to welcome teens and invite them to our Volunteen Project, where they will have the opportunity to make our libraries sparkle, says Andy Apple, Assistant Director of Libraries. Teens 13 and up can assist with many activities, including organizing shelves, cleaning books, wiping down computer stations, and picking up trash around our buildings. If you are interested, stop by any Kern County Library branch that is open on Friday, April 15th or Saturday, April 16th to participate. Library staff will be ready for your help. Sounds like a great idea for teens to get involved and volunteer. Now in KZGN's continuous effort to provide news and information you've asked for, here are today's gas prices for Ridgecrest and some surrounding areas. Well, since my last report last Wednesday, local prices have held steady. The good news is we still have the lowest prices in all the areas we are monitoring. As of this morning, Ridgecrest is ranging from 257 to 299 per gallon, Lancaster from 269 to 302, 
the L.A. Valley area, 263 to 285, and the Bishop area, 279 to 309. We have three stations at the 257 per gallon figure. Tune in Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for updates. We at KZGN always suggest you shop locally to support our local economy. Remember, when you pay sales tax out of town, you're helping those cities pave their streets instead of here. Now stay with us. After the break, we'll have weather and sports. Thanks for staying with us. Now we'll go to Lane for the weather. Hey, Lane, we can have weather this weekend, like rain? Thank you, Tom. And yes, it looks like we still do have a good chance of rain. From the National Weather Service, a series of storm systems moving across the northern U.S. will bring the potential for strong winds and wintry weather from portions of the Great Lakes to New England through Friday. Isolated flash flooding is possible in the main. Meanwhile, a Pacific storm system will bring beneficial rain to the southwest, including much of drought-stricken California, through the weekend. Temperatures across the nation. Carolina is at 60. Georgia is 60. Arkansas at 67. Northern Texas at 68. Arizona is 74. And Los Angeles at 59. And for us locally, tonight, a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms, mostly cloudy with a low around 50. South wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 15. Saturday, a 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms, mostly cloudy with a high near 70. South wind, 5 miles per hour. Saturday night, a 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms, mostly cloudy with low around 49. South-southwest wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 15. Sunday, a 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms, Mostly cloudy with a high near 70. Southwest wind, 5 miles per hour. Sunday night, a 20% chance of showers. Mostly cloudy with a low around 49. Southwest wind, 5 to 15 miles per hour with gusts as high as 20. Monday, a 20% chance of showers. Partly sunny with a high near 72. West southwest wind, 5 miles per hour. Monday night, a 20% chance of showers. Partly cloudy with a low around 50. South wind, 5 miles per hour. And Tuesday, mostly sunny with a high near 77. South wind, 5 miles per hour. And that is your forecast for the IWV. Now back to Tom. Thanks, Lane. And now here's sports. And a very pleasant Friday to everyone. Let's talk about Saracoso baseball. Last night at the dog yard, the Coyotes dropped a tough 14-6 to decision to Taft. Now, Saracoso was off this week when it comes to conference play. They'll start again next week against Rio Hondo. Tuesday will be here at 2.30, Thursday away in Whittier, and then Saturday back here. That's next week, Coso now overall 12 and 15, 4 and 11 in the Foothill Conference. Okay, Major League Baseball last night. The White Sox beat the A's. The Yankees win again. They beat the Astros. Baltimore has a win last night also against Philadelphia. The Dodgers in San Francisco, the Dodgers had won three straight down in San Diego, but San Francisco got them at candlestick, the final score 12 to six. They had three consecutive shutouts against the Padres to open up the season. The Angels got their first win. They won at the Big A last night, four to three against Texas. They pushed over a run in the eighth inning. Angels now one and two on the year, same two teams tonight at the Big A. Over in the National League, the Reds, Marlins, Cubs get wins. The Cubs beat Arizona 3-0. The Cubs are 3-0 right now. NBA last night, the Heat get a win over the Bulls. The Hawks do the same over the Raptors. The Suns, T-Wolves, and the Warriors also win. The Warriors beat the Spurs in Oakland. They'll also have to play next week in San Antonio. Now, here's the deal for Golden State. For them to get the win, to, to get 73 to break the record of the Bulls set back in 96, they have to win out, and they've got four tough games to do so. So we'll see what happens with Steve Kerr and his team that way. NHL playoffs next week, if you can believe it. Montreal, the Islanders, the Lightning, Penguins, Bruins, Senators all get wins last night. The Ducks and Kings tied for first place. The two played last night, and the Kings come out with a one-goal win, 2-1, to one, against the Ducks in Los Angeles. Fifth grade basketball league winners from the other night. Boys, Gateway, Las Flores, Charter, 
and Fowler. Over in the girls' side, Gateway, Las Flores, Charter, and Fowler. Charter girls undefeated off to a very good start. Likewise, Las Flores boys. That's your sports on this Friday. I'm Tom Heck for KZGN. Have a good weekend. So that's the news for today. Also, KZGN TV, know you have a choice in what you watch for your news. We all thank you for choosing KZGN TV, Ridgecrest's only locally owned community TV station. Now stay tuned for Ridgecrest Talk coming up next.